Hello, and welcome to a rather unique addition to Nisa. 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 Yeah. yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm here. Sorry. It's just like a really good book. Go ahead. I'm ready. Hello and welcome to a unique edition of Pages for All Ages. Since we cannot go to the studio to record this, since we are self-isolating and hunkering down and social distancing, we decided to give you a version of Pages for All Ages virtually. Now, you are in Leah's kitchen, but she is definitely not cooking because that woman does not like to cook. No. And you are in my home library where I've been spending most of my time lately. And we are excited to share some amazing books with you. Leah, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, here we go. I guess I will go with the very first book. A home. Oh, you're ready. You go. Please. You want me to go. Okay, so. Yes, you go first. Okay. So my first book is Dragon Hoops by Jean Lewin Yang. It is a biography, sort of, and an autobiography a little bit. It is a young adult graphic novel. Now, you may know our next author from some of his other young adult graphic novels, such as American Born Chinese, Boxers, and Saint. He has also written the middle grade graphic novel series, Secret Coders, which my students love, and I cannot keep them on the shelf. Well, his latest graphic novel is Dragon Hoops. And Jean Yang was a teacher at Bishop O'Dowd High School in California. They are very well known for their varsity basketball team that has gone to the state championship several times, but have never clenched the title. This is the year, or so was the talk. Now, Jean Yang's debut graphic novel had just been published, and now he had no idea what to write about next. With all the talk about O'Dowd's dragons, he figured he could interview the coach, Coach Lou, who was an alum, interview the players, and follow the dragons on their road to the state championship. At the beginning of the book, Yang lets you know how much he dislikes sports. He's not a sports kind of guy. He is a story kind of guy, it's comics to be more specific. With that said, he becomes part of the team, yet struggles when deciding if he should include a former controversial coach. Yang includes his thought and creative process throughout the book, even a discussion he had with a player on why he changed his hair just a little bit when illustrating him. Just a lot of wonderful insight into the writing and illustrating process. Now, I'm not going to tell you what happens to the varsity basketball team. You'll just have to read this book for yourself. Now, I love sports, but I'm not one who wants to read about it, but I could not put this book down. His storybook, his storytelling is magnificent, and his illustrations are rich. Yang is just another one of those authors who doesn't know how to write a bad book. I have loved all of his previous graphic novels, and this one is definitely no exception. Leah? That sounds so good, Nitsa. I have a wonderful book to share with you, A Home for Goddesses and Dogs by Leslie Connor. Leslie Connor also wrote um, Waiting for Normal, if you've read that, and The Truth as Told by Mesa. This is a beautiful novel. I fell so in love with Lydia. She's 13 years old, and she has to move from her city dwelling to the farm very unexpectedly to live with her aunt. Her mother has passed. And this book is a true mascara alert, but it's also one of those where you laugh through your tears, which is one of my favorite things, as you know. Her mother had lived for years waiting for a heart transplant. And by the time Lydia was 13, her mother just couldn't go on. But her mother did keep Lydia hopeful throughout her illness and kept her from worrying by making their goddesses. They made beautiful art pieces with found things and collages and things like that. So this book opens with Lydia holding her box of goddesses on her lap while she's in a little boxy car and she leaves her little box. When she gets to the farm in Connecticut, 
she is greeted by her new family, which includes her aunt Brett's wife, Eileen, and Elleroy, who actually owns the house they live in. Things change drastically for Lydia because she has moved to a small town and she's used to the big city. Guffer, a rescue dog that they picked out when they went to the adoption fair, sets the house on its ear with his wild, wonderful, beautiful shenanigans. There is time that the dog goes through some health problems and there are some rescue goats who are abandoned at the feed store. And there are a lot of coming of age events that keep this story going much like real life. Lydia learns that there is love and there is loss and coping with change and working with others is the way you solve big problems. All the while, her goddesses look over her and keep her memories for her. This is a must read. And once again, mascara alert, Nita. I have that book, Leah. Well, my next book is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. First of all, let's just take a look at that amazing, beautiful cover. It is just gorgeous. It is a young adult fantasy. Do you like mermaids? Who doesn't? What about pirates? Yeah? What about magic? Princesses? Sea monsters? Adventure? A little bit of romance? Well, my friends, this is the book for you. Amora Montara is the princess of Pisidia. It's her time to become queen. But before she can claim the throne, she must perform a dangerous type of magic, soul magic that only the Montora family can perform. She must perform this soul magic flawlessly to demonstrate to her people she is strong enough to control it. However, something goes terribly wrong during her performance and she flees Visidia with a handsome pirate named Bastion. While on Bastion's ship, Amora and Bastion come to a deal where she will help him recover his lost magic. It was taken from him by Cavan, who was leading a rebellion and could destroy this kingdom. With the help of a mermaid and Amora's fiance that she does not want, they embark on a dangerous adventure that you do not want to miss. It is wonderfully and beautifully written. This book was just so much fun to read. And I'm wondering if there is going to be sequel. The ending kind of makes you think there's going to be. So I'm looking forward to finding out the answer to that. Man, I sure hope there is one. It is an amazing read and just a lot of fun. Well, Nisa, I have that book. So oh. I need to read that book. Girl, it's you in, are going to love it. It's in my two read pile. So there you go. I have Clean Getaway by Nick Stone. This is a wonderful and fun adventure. This is the story of William Scoob Lamar and his adventure with his grandma as he leaves his dad's lockdown that happened during spring break. Due to some trouble at school involving a fight to defend a friend, Scoob takes the suitcase that he already packed for a trip that his dad subsequently canceled because of his behavior. And he leaves in his grandmother's brand new Winnebago. Yes, she sold the house. Yes, she sold her car. And she bought a Winnebago. Well, of course, Scoob leaves his cell phone at home because, well, he doesn't want to have to deal with dad and how mad he's going to be that he just took off. So he loves his grandma. He's looking forward to this trip with her and everything is going fine until she begins to act strangely. She switches license plates when they stop at the RV parks. She still tells stories of her travels with her late husband and how they did not finish a trip they were taking and how she is definitely doing this trip there on now to make it right. She doesn't really understand. He doesn't really understand why she's saying that. So she talks about her maps. She talks about jewelry stores. She talks about her late husband serving time in prison for a crime he did not commit. Uh, Scoob learns about his grandma's checkered past and they go to different historic sites along the way and she tells them how difficult it was for her, a white woman, to be married to a black man during the 60s. They they look at the Green Book and find different places for lodging. It's a very interesting trip. Um, 
and it's a lot of fun and a little sad. Um, his grandmother starts talking about things that don't make sense and her health becomes poor. Whenever Scoob finds out that he is the subject of an Amber Alert, he realizes that he must call his dad because grandma has been ignoring his calls and she even threw away her own cell phone. This is a wonderful story about family and love and loss and making amends. Great read. Well, my next book is Bloom by Kenneth Opal. It is book one in a trilogy. It is science fiction appropriate for students in grades five through nine. In this book, a strong rain has occurred all over the world. Something strange is happening. Anaya is usually alerted to everything, and I mean everything. But after this rain, her allergies seem to disappear, even her horrible acne. Her once best friend, the beautiful and popular Petra, who is allergic to water, but the water from this rainfall doesn't seem to bother her skin. Seth is a foster child and has just recently been playing with a couple he likes a lot, but he doesn't quite fit in. But there's more. After this rain, inv invasive plants are taking over their island and fast. Actually, they're taking over globally. So the teens discover that the plants are not of this world and they are immune to the plant's pollen, the sleeping gas that they emit, and the acid that they can spit. Not only that, while everyone around them is suffering greatly from the plant's pollen, they feel the best they ever have felt. What does this all mean? And why have their bodies begun to change? And why are they feeling drawn to each other? Each chapter alternates narration between the three teens, which gives you better insight into each character. Opal has written a book that is fast paced and will keep you on the edge of your seat. You will be longing for the sequel. I am not a huge fan of sci-fi, but this has made me rethink my stance. I am looking forward to book two. And thankfully we don't have to wait too long because book two, Hatch, will arrive this fall. And book three, Thrive will arrive um, the summer of 2021, and I am going to grab it, and hopefully you will too. It's so good. I couldn't put it down. I'm so impressed that you were reading some science fiction. I know it's not your cup of tea, but I, know, Leah, it's not, but I love that. I love class. that, love that, love that. I did not read any science fiction this time. I don't know what's wrong with me, but here we go. Oh, I forgot to tell you on that other book. Um, clean getaway. The, the story was inspired by a tweet that Nick Stone read about a grandma who got arrested that was 81 years old. So that story was inspired by that one tweet. You never know where you get your ideas, I suppose. This book is Bad Bella. And look at sweet Bella. Look at her face. And all the scattered popcorn around. Bad Bella is not really bad. This is written by Allie Standish. She wrote The Ethan I Was Before. This is a middle grade novel. Bad Bella is not so bad. She's the best child in the McBride family. She never complains. She cleans her plate. She even cleans the floor if anybody drops anything. So she doesn't really understand when she gets in trouble for just watering the tree. And then she doesn't get, understand when she gets in trouble for eating all the popcorn off the Christmas tree because she's sure that the Christmas tree was a treat just for her. But mom, who is about to have a new little one, says, this is the last straw. You have to get rid of her. So Mr. McBride packs her up and takes her to the shelter where Bella meets Zoe and she meets Leo and she learns that all dogs are not wanted and she can't really understand why because she's the best bad dog there ever was. Well, Leslie is a worker at, at the shelter and she falls in love with Bella and Bella falls in love with her. So at the next adoption event, some of Leslie's friends come, and it's Alice and Andy, and they adopt Bella 
and give her the life that she deserved. But she was just a puppy when they got her, and she had had the memory of a Christmas before. And it's the next Christmas. And oh no, here's another tree, and there are stockings, and everything is there, and there is a mention of another little one coming. So Bella goes away. It's a wonderful story of learning about love and knowing that sometimes you can be the best bad dog there ever was. So I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Very quick read. I think um, I think young readers will have a great time with it, and you just can't. You just can't pass up the cover. That just made my heart sink that they took the Bella back to the shelter. Yeah, well, her first people did. Her second people didn't. Okay. I won't tell you exactly how it ends, but. Okay. I did cry. I did cry. I cried in, in, in all three of these so far. <laughs> There's some emotional books being written lately, I got to tell you. Maybe I'm just a big baby. I don't know. But no. just pull, you know, I think some of these writers really know how to pull your heartstrings for I sure. Do. And we love animals too, you and I. Yes. Well, my next book is Truman by Jean Reedy. I hope I'm pronouncing the last name correctly. And it is illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummins. It is a picture book and it is on the two by two list. And the two by two list is a list of 20 books for two-year-olds all the way to second grade. So in this book, Truman is a turtle, probably the most adorable turtle you have ever seen in your life. Let me get to my picture of him. Yeah, there he is. Anyways, he lives with his little girl, Sarah. And one day, Sarah puts on a large backpack, puts extra green beans in his dish, told Truman to be brave, and took the number 11 bus heading south. Now, she has never done this before. What does it all mean? Truman waited and waited for Sarah to return, but she didn't. He decides that he will take the number 11 bus heading south to go after his beloved Sarah. That's when he runs into the glass of his tank. Boop. But he notices three rocks there and he climbs them up and out of his tank where he lands safely on the couch. His adventure begins when he has to get down from the couch and cross the endless rug. But oh no. Now he can't see out the window. He doesn't know which way is south. He then hears the bus and knows he must be brave and get on that bus. But who comes through that door? His darling, Sarah. Sarah is a little bewildered on how Truman got out of his tank, but that doesn't matter. They have been reunited. And that evening, Sarah reads him a story that lets him know that he too may take the number 11 bus heading south to new adventures. Is that the page? Yeah, that's the page. Now, I gotta tell you, I wanna go out and get a little turtle and name him Truman, but I may just have to name one of my next foster kittens Truman in honor of this remarkable sweet turtle. I don't know if this house could hold another pet after three cats, a dog, and a leopard gecko. And I just got to say, this book is just so sweet and you'll just ah throughout the whole book. It's a darling read and it is a great book for inferencing. We're always looking for books for inferencing. This yes. one's a great one. Always. And I love pictures, that. Oh, and the illustrations are just sweet. I just like, I needed to go out. I felt the need to go out and get a turtle immediately. But like I said, I think we're a little done with the pet situation here <laughs> at least for now house. maybe you maybe you could get another one later yes but he's so cute i just love him my next book is the last word by samantha hastings this is a ya novel and it's 1861 victorian london miss lucinda leavitt has returned home from finishing school 
She is home waiting for people to call on her and to receive invitations for outings. And she waits for the post every day so she can finish her serialized novel that she has to find out what happens at the very end. This is what? Last installment, or so she thinks. When she gets her ladies' magazine, she reads the novel, and it ends with a cliffhanger, a huge cliffhanger, with a note that says that the author, Mrs. Smith, has passed away, and this is all of the novel that there is. Well, this cannot be. This cannot be. So she enlists the aid of her father's young business partner and her childhood friend, Mr. David Randall. He is going to help her find this reclusive author. Family. Mr. Randall does not have time for all of this folder all because he is very behind in his ledgers at the counting house. But Lucinda is a determined young woman and she will not be told no. So she goes in, she asks to help with the audits, she asks to help with her father's paperwork as well. And that is not done. Young ladies do not try to work outside of the home in 1861. It is not ladylike. Well, she does enlist the aid of David Randall to take her on a trip to find the author's family and to find out what truly happened to Mrs. Smith. There is romance. There is adventure. There is even danger. So this is a great book. If you are someone who loved Emma, Pride and Prejudice, some of those very proper, proper books, this is a great book, and I loved this about the books as well. There's a little bit of lace in the front of every chapter, and uh, I, you just, I just love the feel of the Victorian era in this book. So if you like books like that, one of the reviews I read about the book, just so I always read reviews to see if I kept, caught everything in the book. One of the reviews said, this is a book for the book lover. <laughs> so there you go. I read Jane Eyre every year um, during the Christmas holidays usually. And my sister introduced me to the book and there's just something about that love story I love so, so much. And this reminded me of that in a way, you know, it just had that same kind of feel to it. So I've never read Jane Eyre. <sighs> it is lovely, Nita. It is lovely. Now I do love the um, that goth that gothic novel Rebecca. Yes. Have you read Rebecca? I have not. Oh, I love that book. And then there's a movie you can go out and watch, an older movie, but great. Oh yeah. But yeah, I may have to read Jane Eyre. I just I've never read it. It's wonderful. And if you're not wanting to read it, if you'd like to like do something else, they have it on Audible right now, and it's only cost one credit. One oh, credit. Nice. Audible is fantastic. Mm -hmm. My next book is Cyril and Pat by Emily Gravitt. It is a picture book that is also on the two by two list appropriate for students or kids in from two years old to second grade. Cyril is the only squirrel in Lake Park and he is sad and lonely until he meets Pat, his new best friend. Now Pat is a squirrel just like Cyril. Or is he? Can y'all see that picture? They spend their days playing games, putting on puppet shows, and scaring pigeons. Now, one of the pigeons tells Cyril that Pat is not like him. His friend is a... Well, before the pigeon can finish, Cyril says, a real joker. Other animals try to tell Cyril that Pat is not who he thinks he is. But one day, unfortunately, Cyril does really discover that Pat is a rat. And, and everyone tells Cyril that squirrels can't be friends with rats. So once again, he is sad and lonely in Lake Park. I mean, it's not easy playing games all by yourself. But one day, Cyril finds himself in a bit of trouble. He tries to outrun Slim, the dog, but finds himself out in the park, into the city, in the dark, and all alone. When Cyril 
is cornered by Slim and about to be pounced on, Pat is there with the rest of his rat family and friends and rescues Cyril. And Cyril discovers that he can be friends with whomever he wants. They don't have to be the same to be true friends. This is a wonderful read aloud to share with a class or a family. The illustrations are bright and colorful. It is a book that should be added to every single collection, whether it's a public library collection, a school collection, a home collection. Get it. It is such a wonderful message for everybody. And I have been a longtime fan of Emily Gravitt. And when I saw that this book was on the two by two list, um, yeah, I squealed. And Leah, you can attest that I have squealed several times about books. And Emily Gravitt just has a really great sense of humor that really comes across in her book. She is absolutely fantastic. Great read. This book is Away with Wild Things by Larissa Tool, illustrated by Sarah Palacios. Look at little Poppy Ann Field. Isn't she precious with her glasses? And little Poppy Ann loves, loves, loves bugs. She loves bugs more than anything. She likes to sit among the wildflowers and patiently listen to the cicadas. She likes to look at the art that spiders make when they weave their webs. She spends long afternoons talking to the ladybugs about shapes and colors and the heights of flowers, but good luck finding her among people because she is shy. She likes to blend in and uses camouflage to her advantage. She wears a floral dress when there's flowers. She wears a dress that looks like the trees or like something in a painting. She blends in even on rainy days. Well, one day they were having a party for grandma because her grandma Phyllis was turning 100. There's grandma Phyllis right there. And Poppy is over in the trees. Her grandpa calls her a wallflower. But she comes alive when she notices that a dragonfly lands on the cake. She goes to it. And to find out exactly what is going on, she loved the way that the dragonfly's wings shimmered in the sun. Guests stopped mealing about, and everyone froze when they heard Poppy say, So there you are. The dragonfly landed on Poppy and someone gasped and said, would you look at that? It flew to her like it knows her. And Poppy's got away with wild things, said Grandma Phyllis. And while Grandpa called her a wild, a wallflower, Grandma called her a wildflower. Beautiful book. I love little Poppy in fields and her little glasses. I love her little grandma. And I love it that she loves nature so much. And there she is with her. Sweet, sweet, sweet book. Everyone needs it. Everyone needs it. <laughs> she is precious. She is precious. I had that face and that haircut with her little bangs. So cute. It's so sweet. I love it. Well, I am so excited about the next book. The next book is Summer Song by Kevin Hickers. Yay! And it's illustrated by his amazing wife, Laura Dronzik. Oh, it's finally here. Summer Song completes the season series, and I am beyond stoked. Y'all know how much I love me some Kevin Hinkins. I don't even think I need to formally review Summer Song by the Kevin Hinkins. I mean, it's Kevin Hinkins, so you know it's going to be fantastic, marvelous, spectacular, astounding, extraordinary, incredible, fantastic. <gasps> Sorry, I lost myself there for a minute. Ooh, Leah, you know how much I love me some Kevin Hankins. So sit in the magic that is summer, how summer is green and is also music with the wind, lawnmowers, thunder, rain, and birds. 
And just, I just have to show you this illustration because it just takes my breath away. I just love this book. How summer can also be a blue song with skies, lakes, beaches. It can be hot, but cool with blow up plastic pools, ice cream, and tree shade. And when summer draws to a close, we have a different song to look forward to. Fall. It's another quiet book to pour over the illustrations. With its strong color saturation, this book is a feast for your eyes. Hankus, Hankus and Drozik show us all the deliciousness that is summer and all of its wonderment. I'm so happy that this book is finally here. I know I'm crazy when it comes to Kevin Hankus. I just, I just love him so very much. I know. I love that. I love that book. This is How to Be a Pirate by Isaac Fitzgerald, illustrated by Bridget Berger. This book really. Oh, it spoke to me and it's such a wonderful story. It is a picture book, of course. And this is little Cece. She wants to be a pirate. But the little boys that live near her say, you can't be a pirate. You're a girl. And she is not taking that lying down. She goes to see her grandpa. She says, grandpa, and here, Cece. What is it like to be a pirate? And he says, how do you know I know anything about being a pirate? And tell me, why do you want to know about being a pirate? Well, Cece takes a deep breath and she says, well, the boys are pretending to be pirates and they won't let me play. I even brought my sword. But they said, you can't be a pirate. And what if they're right? I don't know how to be one. So you want to know about pirates, eh, said Grandpa? Well, I guess the first thing that a pirate needs, maybe a boat? No, the first thing a pirate needs is to be brave. A pirate seeks out adventure and isn't afraid of obstacles ahead. And what else? Grandpa's still showing his tattoos. Well, a pirate has to be quick. What else, Grandpa? Still showing tattoos. Well, it's not all about danger, though, Grandpa whispered. A pirate knows how to have fun. And another thing a pirate must be is independent. So, Cece learns that whether you're a pirate or not, you have to have love. So, with all of that information, and her sword, Cece marches back out to the treehouse and says, I am brave, I am independent, I am quick, and I am fun. And you know what? She loves being a pirate. And the boys are there with her. I love this, that it goes from not so colorful in the front to very colorful in the back. Cece found her own, and she realized that she is capable of being a pirate. So fun book for girls, fun book, well, fun book for everybody. And I love the front cover looks almost like a tattoo as well. Grandpa is a wonderful character in this. So get this book and enjoy. Now I'm just gonna show um, the three next books. I'm not gonna review them because um, I reviewed maybe the book before them. Several months ago, I reviewed the book called Escargot by Dashka Slater. You remember the fashionably dressed French snail? Well, he's back and looking more adorable than ever. We have a book for Escargot by Dashka Slater. I can't get enough of his little face and his cute little beret and his handkerchief. Oh, love him. And then this book was just released and it's the latest in the Peter and Ernesto graphic novel series by Graham Annabelle. I loved the first two books, and I will be delving into this book this evening. 
I have several students who love Peter and Ernesto and they're going to be so excited about his latest release. And Leah, you know how much I love sloth. Look what I have here. It's the latest tiny T-Rex book by, jo by Jonathan Stutzman. It is illustrated by Jay Fleck. You reviewed this book a few months ago. And if you love the first one, you, want what, you may want to pick up his latest. I will definitely have to pick that one up for sure. This book is An Ordinary Day by Elena K. Arnold, illustrated by Elizabeth Vukanovich. And this picture book is so beautiful. The muted colors, it's mostly grays, shades of gray, with a little bit of orange and a little bit of blue in. And it's a simple but beautiful story that's told simultaneously or maybe even kind of paralleled. It's a regular neighborhood and there are two little houses on the street and two cars pull up and out of the cars come two people with bags and a stethoscope around their necks. They go to the doors and each knock on one of the little houses and they are admitted. And in one house, there's a golden retriever on the bed. And in another house, there is a woman that is about to have a baby on the bed. The stethoscopes come out. The respective doctors, we assume, listen and say at the same time, she is ready. In one house, a syringe is ready. In another house, a back is rubbed with lotion. In one house, a family gathers to say goodbye. And in the other house, a family gathers to say hello. Um, it's such a beautiful book. I'm so sorry that I'm getting kind of teary. Um, I want to read this last part. Life went on outside on the street, and Magnificent the Crow continued to declare what was going on. In one house, there was a final exhale, surrounded by family and love. And in the other house, there was an inhale, surrounded by family and love. And the last page reads, and I quote, it was an ordinary day in the neighborhood. It was an extraordinary day in the neighborhood. And like all days in all neighborhoods that are everywhere. It's such a beautiful story. And I know it's on Sora right now, but I am definitely buying a hardcover in this book. I think it would be a great gift book. I think it'd be a great book to talk about love and loss and love and rebirth so beautiful story i did read that on story yesterday and i did have me crying uh -huh. like i'm crying now but it is and actually it would be a good story to talk about inferencing because it doesn't tell you who those people are with the steps that's true it doesn't that's tell really you true. exactly what is happening it just says there's an exhale there's an inhale i mean but it's a it's a lot it's kind of a heavy book it is but a beautiful story Yes. Well, I guess that's it for this edition of Pages for All Ages. No virus is going to keep us from recording our show. Exactly, because we can, we can still read and we can still talk. Absolutely. And I hope everyone is reading right now. Don't forget your librarians are still working. Um, we still can do book recommendations. Capstone, Abdo, Sora is still available 24 Seven. So I hope you are reading just like we are. And I know this book is calling my name right now. So Leah, I guess I'll see you on the next edition of Pages for All Ages. And I'll see you next time too. I've got to go read. All right. See you later.